Mobility. That's what our modern society demands. And we like to take things like music, telephone, and more recently, the internet right along with us to keep us in constant communication with the rest of humanity. And with today's modern smartphones, that's a very simple demand to meet. But mobile devices haven't always been around. So to start the story of modern mobile devices, we must go back to the 1940s where the cutting edge of mobile phones meant a device built into your car, and that allowed only two-way communication. However, in 1946, cell phone technology made a giant leap forward when the Swedish police began to use devices that allowed mobile access to telephone lines. It relied on the car's battery, which, considering it would kill the battery in about six calls, must have been quite limiting. Radio, which is only one-way communication, was much faster in getting into vehicles, having been in them for about a decade already. But these things were stuck in your car. Sure, your car is mobile, but what about when you're out and about, but not in your car? Or, at the very least, you don't want to wear down your car battery. It was here where radio once again beat the telephone. By, like, a lot. While the Swedish were just figuring out how to get the phone into their cars, portable radio sets started becoming more common in the United States, following the end of the Second World War, and even earlier for military use. True cell phones, however, would have to wait for the 60s and a man named Martin Cooper to become a reality. The first cell phone was not the light device we know today. In fact, the first 30-ounce phone was roughly equivalent to the weight of six iPhone 4s. A mobile cassette tape player was introduced in 1965 with the original intention of mobile recording and playback. Tapes with music would soon after be sold allowing the first on-demand playback of music in a portable format. The device, however, weighed more than three pounds. When the Walkman was introduced in 1979, the device became much more portable, weighing it at only 14 ounces. Pagers, a small device used to let people on the go know that someone else was trying to contact them, had been invented in the late 1940s. Despite this, it was not very successful with consumers until 1974, the year after the first successful mobile phone call. As the pager advanced, it helped pave the way for what would eventually become known as texting, with small screens and the ability to send and receive written messages. Cell phones began to garner some success with consumers in the early 1980s. Unfortunately, the mobility of these phones were still limited, for the most part, to cars due to the necessity of a large battery. The only alternative was a phone in a briefcase. The briefcase could hold a battery large enough to make phone calls, but that's still hardly a mobile phone as we know them today. CDs, which had begun dominating cassette tapes, got their own mobile player in 1984. The mid-1980s marked the moment when mobile computing began to become more widely available to consumers though the technology can be traced back to about a decade earlier. However, weight was certainly not optimal with as much as 30 pounds of electronics for people to haul around. The wireless technology of Wi-Fi, which allowed for wireless internet, can be traced back to as early as 1991, but wouldn't really begin catching on until 1999 when Apple picked it up for their computers. Apple, however, would not be the only ones with the technology for very long, when it was soon after picked up for PCs. By the 1990s, cell phones were significantly smaller and lighter, weighing in at only about a quarter to half a pound, and in 1997, the concept of browsing the internet on one of these small devices was introduced. However, it wouldn't become very successful until about a decade later. As music became digital, the first MP3 players began to be introduced by a company called Seihan Information Systems, but would soon get dominated in the market by Apple when they released their very first generation of MP3 players, known as iPods, in 2001. In 2000, even cameras increased their mobility when they began being added to people's cell phones. In 2007, arguably the pinnacle for mobile devices history, Apple's iPhone was introduced. This new device, known as a smartphone, could not only make and receive phone calls like any other cell phone, but revolutionized mobile internet browsing, could play MP3 files like an iPod, had applications allowing mobile gaming to reach new levels, 
Mobile gaming had existed in cell phones prior to this, but were considerably more limited. It also had both 3G and Wi-Fi technologies built in, allowing the actual access to the internet to be mobile. In addition, it had a built-in camera. So here finally was a device that could meet the demands for mobile music and the internet. But what about radio? Since many radio stations now offer their broadcasts via the internet, smartphones are even able to pick up that through their mobile browsers. Certainly mobile devices have come a long way. Starting out very limited, clunky, and more often than not, considerably heavy, many tasks can now be accomplished with one small sleek device that can fit easily in one's pocket.